Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, in this episode, uh, we are finally getting to where the rubber meets the road. We're going to be doing a... That's a weird thumbnail that I put. I had a better thumbnail earlier. Come on, Rizal. Why are you changing thumbnails? Anyway, I'm going to start my project here, and we're going to get into color grading, show you guys how to color grade. We've gone over the scopes. We've gone over the controls. We've gone over the basics of the scopes, over the basics of the controls. Uh, first and foremost, the color wheels the curves, and your secondaries. Those are the main ones that we've covered for right now. We'll go over, as time goes on, I'm going to be covering different uh, features in, in Resolve, but right now we're going to be going over, yeah, just the, just the basics so you can get started and get color grading a project. First of all, all this footage that I have is, um, is red raw footage. So in an earlier episode, I showed basically how to set everything back to its, the, the raw settings. I went for a 30, I went to 3200 color temperature because we're using incandescent lights. I set everything in a flat log profile, the red log film profile. And I went into the edit feature and I resized everything so it fit because they shot this in 2 to 1 and then unintentionally they shot the first clip in 16 by 9. But they framed for 1.89 to 1 so I framed every reframed everything in my 1.89 to 1 aspect ratio, uh, my DCI aspect ratio. So now we're going to go to color and we're going to start color grading general rules with color grading and this is just this some of this is just my process that um, that I take uh, to do color grading some people will do it different but generally generally I think this is the way a lot of people do it I'm gonna bring up my scopes here and we're gonna start off I'm gonna kind of change scopes like I said if you got a dual screen monitor this works so much better I'm gonna put it right here because I'm gonna use this area for my for my gallery stills later on right here so right now I'm just gonna kind of block it with my scopes since I'm doing grading and I'm gonna go for the waveform first so a couple things we're gonna work on first of all is luminance level right now this is a log format so I don't have any danger of anything I'm not getting anything that's like a uh, that's peaking terribly bad though we got the window right here these windows were intentionally shot it was shot inside of a studio that was put uh, diffusion was outside so it was meant to be blown out to make it look like so much sunlight's coming in that it's kind of blowing out the windows so that's okay if we kind of flatline on here, but notice it's not pushing up to 1023 or the top here where it's losing complete detail. But aside from that, we don't want detail in that window anyway. We want it to look blown out. So what we're going to do is uh, the exposure level looks pretty well right here. It's supposed to be just mildly darker in the room because we're looking at our face with the backlight of the sun coming in. So if we wanted to, we could mess with gamma and turn this up and down. Uh, let's turn it up just a little bit, get it around like maybe 50 uh, or, or 512, which would be kind of similar to uh, rate, uh, similar exposure to 50 IRE. That little dotted line is your mid-gray line. Uh, now I'm going to grab lift, which is my darkness levels. I'm going to grab the tone sliders and drag this down and get that closely defined to, uh, to zero. I'm going to keep it a little bit above right now, and then I'm going to grab my gain and stretch those up and create a little bit of contrast. Now I'm starting to run into where my uh, lights are going to be blown out. I want to get these to where they're just kind of, in this specific uh, instance, I want them to get those blown out. Usually you're trying to restore detail, but in this instance, I intentionally want it to be blown out. I'm going to bring my gamma maybe up a little bit more and bring my lift down a little bit and create a little bit more contrast. Now if we want even more contrast, I can go down here and grab my contrast slider and drag this to the left and really expand those kind of mids down in here to get a little bit more contrast in my image here. And now, see, now I'm tipping out with the gain, so I'm just going to bring that down just to get it a little below 1023, so we lose detail, but not just like totally blown out. There we go. Okay, uh, let's talk about the nodes here. First of all, I've got a node here, and the grade that I've been performing is attaching those uh, instructions to this node here. The node tree is basically what this does. Over here, this is your original clip right here with nothing done to it. As we move through this node tree, we go on to a node, and then these effects have been uh, uh, compiled on top of my uh, on top of this node. So those effects, those contrast things that I just did, the luminance and contrast effects are connected to this node here. Now you can add different nodes and different nodes are going to be for different effects. Say you want to do your contrast and uh, luminance on one or you can even do maybe just your primary uh, effects on one and then you can add another one for uh, secondaries for like skin tones or decreasing saturation maybe on like the reds if it's oversaturated. And uh, there's a ton of reasons you can use nodes we're, we're going to be getting into and the, the nodes can get quite advanced. But as you go input it will have a hierarchy. Now this uh, image is no longer the original image. It's been graded. It's got the contrast to it. And the next node that we add, if we had if we do option S, it'll be alt S on a, on a PC. Now this node is going to uh, base its grade off of what's been done here. It's acting like this one here is the original file now, uh, this node is. So the contrast that's been done in here, it's no longer, if, if the darks have been crushed to where they're, they're no longer visible like this, if you're just crush, crushing the darks, look at this, it's, it's going, and you're, now you use this one to try to bring the darks back up. It's not 
going to be able to restore the details because the details were crushed in this one. And that's pretty much the way a node uh, works. If you want to bring a node back to uh, neutral to where it's not doing anything, uh, the home key is how you bring grades back to normal. But uh, if you do command home, command home or control home is going to just reset the entire grade and bring everything back to home, basically. And that's using your home key. I'm going to undo that. Now, if you want to bring a node back to home and not the whole entire grade, that is shift home. Whatever one I have selected, and I'm going to select my second one and sh hit shift home here, and it brings that one back to uh, a neutral uh, node there. And you can make as many grades as you want to here, or as many nodes as you want to. If you hold down Option S, you can create as many as you want to, and you'll have this node tree going in this, this order, this downstream fashion. And then this is your final output right here. So after this node is done, whatever you put on that, this is your final output right there. Uh, so this is your input, this is your output. Let's undo these, go back to where we just had the two nodes. Uh, we'll get more into the node tree later on, kind of show you some things where you need to uh, be like doing things like uh, parallel nodes and some other options. But right now, I'm going to keep all my primary grade on this node right here. We're just going to do my basic grades on this one right here. We've, we've done our luminance and contrast on our original node here. And we've kind of spread that out. If you want, by the way, if you want to see your before and after, let's go, let's go through your before and after. The letter D is what takes is what does uh, before and after. But you're going to use different option. You're going to use different features with your Command or Control on a PC, Option and Shift D. So if I do Command D, what the Command D does is it turns off the node that you have selected. Command D or Control D is to turn off a single node. Option D or alt D on a PC will turn off all your nodes just on that single just on this single file right here. So it turns off all nodes on that single file. What Shift D does is Shift D is an overall bypass. Let's go to this clip right here and let's do just some quick grading here. Turn up our gamma, turn down our left, uh, increase it, add some contrast to this image here. Okay, and we've got our we've got a basic grade there going on. And you can tell which ones have been graded because it's got on the number of the clip, this number three here, it's got a little circ, uh, color circ, double square going around this number and around this number. So these ones have been unaffected. But this one's been affected, this one's been affected. You can tell by that little color uh, by that little color box there. So now if I hit shift D, shift D is going to bypass everything. Right now, these nodes are still basically active, but it's just bypassed your entire timeline and you're looking at everything from its raw footage, everything from its original footage, everything in its uh, in its log footage here, and you're seeing everything ungraded. So Shift D to bring everything back, and it actually says up here. You can see that it says bypassed. So bypass is different, where it bypasses everything. Option or Alt D will uh, turn off your nodes on that grade that you have selected. See, this one is still active, and this one has been uh, has been disabled. The nodes have been disabled. Option D to bring them back, and then Command D will just do a single node, whatever node you're on. And look at this. Look at my number two when I when I disable this node. It changes the nature of the grade that I did. Oh, I actually haven't done a grade on this. Let's push it. Do a blue push there. But yeah, if this one is deactivated right there, then look, look how my final output is now magenta. But if I take this one and deactivate it based on what I did with this node here, it makes it more of this. It's still magenta, more of this kind of bluish flat image there. So this, this is no longer reading this node. It's reading the output now and doing the grade based on the output rather than this node. By the way, I've got a little cheat sheet, a little Word, a Microsoft Word cheat sheet I'm going to be posting on Google Drive and putting a link to so you guys can... Uh, look at the cheat sheet and see the cheat sheet that I've got here. These these are all the these are all the commands that I happen to use the most here. Uh, so you can kind of go through this and see these like Option S and Alt S, Add Node and so on. If I ever have Option and Alt, kind of then the same thing. It's got to be putting slashes on these things so you know. If, if it's Mac or PC, but you can look through this cheat sheet here and uh, and find your your quick um, your, your shortcuts. There's a ton of other shortcuts that uh, DaVinci Resolve uses, especially with editing. At its very base level, it uses shortcuts that were very prominent in uh, Final Cut Pro 7 and earlier. So a lot of the shortcut features that you have in editing are borrowed from from Final Cut. Like if you need to zoom up on your timeline, Command mi Plus and Minus. Uh, or Control Plus and Minus on the PC will zoom in and out. Shift Z to put to reframe everything within your within your viewable window, which helps in coloring as well. If you zoom up uh, to an item like this, and you want to get your your image framed back to uh, where you're seeing the full image, Shift Z takes that back. That is an old Final Cut Pro uh, shortcut. All right, I'm going to turn this note off right here. I'm going to get rid of that for right now because we're working on our primary. Command Shift W to bring up my scopes. And we're next going to be we're going to be working next on uh, saturation and hue. First of all, saturation. Uh, actually, I'm going to do balancing first because this this thing needs to be balanced. So I'm going to go to my 
pray didn't get this balance before I start really working with secondary colors here. And I'm going to look at my scopes here, and I look at uh, my red channel, green channel, blue channel. My red channel has a bigger push than the than the other two. Uh, it's it's higher, especially where I'm looking at the subject here, kind of in the middle. We are getting. I'm guessing this is mostly our subject right here, here here. The blue channel is really, really low. The green channel is lower and the red channel is higher. So we are getting a, uh, a push in the reds here and our image looks a little bit magenta-ish or reddish as a result. I shouldn't say magenta-ish. It is more green red actually after looking at the magenta is more like blue and red. Green and red we're getting a kind of a push in the green and red here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my curves here and we're going to mess with the channels. Actually to start with we could try the basics here. We go back to our color wheels here and we can move down uh, the bottom here, contrast, saturation, hue. I'm not going to worry about uh, saturation right now. I'm going to go to number two, and we're going to work on the temperature and tint. Let's slide our temperature to see if we can kind of get that blue pushed up a little higher. We are, but now we're starting to kind of peek out the blues at the top, so I'm going to probably want to use, rather than just the basic slider on this, I'm probably going to want to use my curves to fix this because the basic sliders aren't cutting it. So I'm going to double click on the name right here, tint and temperature to get those back to normal. And I'm going to go to my curves and where we really have uh, control over these channels and I'm going to turn off the chain and we're going to go, let's first of all go, let's go blue here because uh, red is, probably, is right in the middle, kind of where I want everything. And we're going to try to kind of shape this to fit the red here. Uh, actually the green is going to be the, let's try the green one first. Um, I'm going to bring down the mids of the green here. See, so actually I'm going to boost up the, the, the mids of the green to get kind of this area to match this level right here. And this is going to end up kind of looking a little too greenish at first, but the blue is really what's going to fix this. And I'm going to bring up the bottom, how my, see how the bottom of my greens are, are hitting the bottom? Right now I've got my Luma, Luma mix on. And right now since it's, the, my Luma mix is on, in a previous episode I kind of went over the Luma mix and explained that it, uh, to compensate if you boost the, the, the Luma on one channel, single channel, it compensates by bringing the other ones down or vice versa. So right now, I actually, without crushing the reds and blues, I'm going to, I want to control these things separately. So I'm going to turn my Luma mix to zero for right now. Go back to my curves, and I'm going to bring that green channel down now and get it to where it's almost touching the bottom. And try to get these to kind of match. Get the mids up and bring down the tips here to kind of meet the red there. See, because I don't necessarily always want to like bring bring down the, maybe the highlights and the blues because maybe the, the the light's coming through the window is supposed to be kind of bluish. We got some color contrast, but now let's try the blue, and this is really what's going to kind of fix it here. I'm going to boost up the bottom here, get the bottom from uh, tipping off, uh, hitting the bottom there, and already look at this. Look how much better this is looking. The color is looking. See, and I probably should have done this on a different uh, node. Actually, I'm going to do this all on a different node. I'm going to undo. I'm going to undo uh, what I've done here. I'm going to do this on a separate node so you can kind of see the before and after in this step here. So Alt, Option S to add a new node, and I'm going to do the grade on this. Okay, I'm back to normal here, uh, where I was before before I started working on the curves. Uh, so now let's do it on this node, because I just want to... Normally I would do this on this node as well, but, but, but I want to see what it looks like before and after just to show you guys. So I'm going to go to the... I'm going to turn my Luma Mix down to zero. And that's just going to be for this node, by the way. So now my Luma Mix on this one is at 100. This one's at zero on here. So this will actually work better. So I'm going to go to my node here. So it's not going to affect my entire grade. It'll affect just the curves that I'm using. All right, so with green, we're going to boost up the low lights there so they kind of match the reds. And it looks like this kind of region is kind of meeting the, the same level here. Maybe boost that up just a teeny bit more and bring down the highlights just a teeny bit. Let's go to the blue here. Lift my blues up from the bottom there, get those up. And let's see what that looks like. That's still that's looking a little too bluish, so maybe bring the blues down a little bit. So you use kind of your eyeballs mixed with your with your scopes here. Let's look, let's look at the before and after here. So I'm going to do a Command D and just turn off this node and look at how warm that is and now how cool it is. And then now this one seems to now that I've kind of killed a little bit of that contrast that we had, I can go back uh, to my main thing here and add contrast back to this image right here. And see, that's kind of bringing out the variations here that I, I need to fix a little bit. So we're going to bring down the blue. And I'm getting a little bit more of a of a balanced shot here. Let's go to our let's go to our uh, histogram to kind of fine tune this, and we can kind of look at see how we need the bottom kind of spread out there a little bit to meet the red. Let's bring that down. Okay, so let's look at our before and after, and I'm liking that color a lot more. So now we're going to work on a, I'm going to actually add a new node after this, just so I can see the individual color. Sometimes, like I said, I, I will leave all my primaries on one, 
a node. I'm going to do Option S and add a node here, and we're going to work on saturation now. So we worked on color balance, we worked on contrast, and now I'm going to go to my vector scope, and we're going to work on work on saturation. So looking at our saturation here, we've got some issues with the red that's like bleeding way off here. Uh, that's almost to the peak moment, and that is this thing right here. So first of all, we can start off maybe by bringing down just the general saturation on this new node here. I'm going to bring down the general saturation for the image. Okay, and I'm watching mostly for skin tone there, and the skin's looking pretty decent. But now I want to be now I want to bring down just the saturation for this one right here. So this was the uh, general saturation, but now I'm going to add another node. You don't have to add, be adding all these nodes, like I said. If you wanted to, you could do this all in one grade. Your primary is all in one grade, or you can do them separately if you want to have control over these. In fact, you can even name these things here. You can right click and say node label, and we can just say we can say luma and contrast. L and C I'll put just for luma and contrast. We can add node label and we'll call this one balance. This was my color balancing. This one was my saturation. And this one's going to be called secondary. If you need to keep track of these, this is helpful to add the names on these things here. So that's going to be my secondary.